Good evening, everybody, and welcome from sunny Vancouver. It's been an absolutely beautiful day today. <coughs> and uh, my name is Sue Taylor, and I'll be your host for this evening. Um, if you haven't already, uh, please take a look at the screen, and you'll see a survey that's to be completed before uh, the webinar. And you'll see another post-survey once we're finished the presentation. We're showing this presentation through Adobe Connect. And you'll see a chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, there's been some interesting chat going on. And Mala says maybe you could tell us the host's qualifications. Well, Mala, I have no qualifications as a host. But I am an employee with the Canadian Diabetes Association. And I was the chosen one this evening. But I'm very happy to be here because we've got a wonderful presenter. Um, so you can put some information into that particular chat box. It's great for you to put. I know we've got some people from Alberta. We've got some people from Victoria. So let us know where you're from. But for the actual questions during the question and answer period, uh, the, on the left at the bottom, towards the left at, at the bottom of your screen, that's where you'll type your questions. And you can type them throughout the presentation. And we'll, we'll make sure that they're answered at the end of the presentation. Mm -hmm. Um, to avoid any background noises, I'll be muting the phone. So all you'll hear is our guest speaker. The presentation this evening will be about 45 minutes in length, uh, with about 15 to 30 minutes at the end for questions and answers. And it's also being recorded and will be posted on our website at a later date. So those of you who have to leave early or those people who've missed it can catch up later on. Now, by joining this session this evening, you, you'll learn the following. What is diabetes burnout? Common responses to chronic disease management. Respecting the inevitable highs and lows. Recognizing restorative practices. And knowing when to ask for help. And uh, delivering that information to, to us tonight is Crystal Johnson who has navigated the challenges of living with type 1 diabetes for 25 years and recognizes the ebbs and flows of daily disease management. And you'll see Crystal in the top right-hand corner of your screen. And um, I'd say, Crystal, you were diagnosed pretty young, because uh, with 25 years, um, you look very young. <laughs> Having experienced the psychological toll of her diabetes journey, she became a registered clinical counselor in order to help others live effectively and vibrantly with their own condition. She has a private counseling practice in Vancouver, BC, where she provides support for people with any chronic or medical condition. Crystal acknowledges the uniqueness of each person's path and partners with her clients to process the challenges, harness strengths, and move forward with peace. So Crystal, would you like to take it away, please? Great. Thank you for the lovely welcome, Sue. I appreciate that very much. Um, so. I'm looking forward to spending the next hour or so with everyone here. Uh, it's a new format for me working through the webinar, so I'm going to try and be keeping my eye on some of the chat box there. And from time to time throughout the presentation tonight, I'll be asking you some questions and hopefully get some feedback from you as we're going along. So uh, I will do my best to, to monitor what's going on there and be able to make this as relevant to those who are here participating as I can. So the gist of the talk is living well with diabetes. So really wanting to look at some simple ways to approach living well and the challenges that come up for all of us when we live with diabetes. This is definitely not meant to be yet another task in our day-to-day -day lives and the daily management of our diabetes because I do get that we already have a laundry list, you know, three pages long of the things we need to do. And that's really what's bringing us all here, is recognizing that sometimes that list can be really quite a challenge to navigate from day to day. So this is a chance to explore how, how burnout might show up in our lives, what to do if it does. And it's also a chance to really explore for yourself what are your own restorative practices and how you can keep them on call when you need them. So in terms of disclosures, uh, I do operate a private practice in counseling psychology here in Vancouver, uh, where I see clients often dealing with burnout and other types of uh, medical conditions. 
Uh, other than that, I have no other disclosures. So about me, I am a registered clinical counselor. That's my, my training. I have my master's of counseling psychology. And I developed type 1 diabetes in 1990 when I was 11 years old. And so I've been dealing with the daily management of diabetes for, as, uh, as Sue mentioned, for 25 years. And I have experienced diabetes burnout myself in the form of uh, anger, depression, and anxiety over the years as I've been dealing with, with my day-to-day -day management. And I, I do believe that partly that's my genetic makeup that has contributed to those conditions, but it also is the, the cumulative stresses of living with a chronic condition that all of us here tonight have to deal with. So that question, what is diabetes burnout? It's maybe a, a term that you may not have heard before. Oftentimes, when we hear the term burnout, we think of that in terms of our work life or our careers. There, there's that long-term burden of a situation that goes on and on that exceeds our ability to cope with that situation. And in terms of diabetes, there's no vacation from the day-to-day -day management, from all of the tasks that we need to do. And I recently worked with a client, and the concept of burnout never occurred to him with respect to his diabetes. He had heard of it in terms of his job, and he was thinking that he was feeling like he was very stressed out, but didn't seem proportionate to the amount of stress in, in his work. And he found it really interesting and a, a whole new concept to think that actually some of this burnout and this stress and the overload was coming from the management of his diabetes in concert with the rest of his life. And there's a good importance of being aware of diabetes burnout so that it doesn't sneak up on us. Um, and so I'm curious, uh, anyone who's listening tonight there, have you heard the term diabetes burnout? Is that something that has been a, a topic that you have explored with your, with your healthcare team or with other people in your life? OK, so I'm hearing Mala, no, I haven't. Nicholas Martin, no, no. OK, so it sounds like it's not something that a lot of people are learning a lot about in the medical system, which is not overly surprising to me. And I'm extra glad that you're all here tonight to, to learn a little bit more and hopefully find some tools that might be able to help you with this. So as a diabetic, like everyone else, we have the regular things that can be stressful enough as they are. We have our work, our careers, often marriage or relationships of some kind. Many people have children. We have homes, and there's just the regular fun stuff, having our recreational activities, maybe travel. And so there's all of those things. Plus, while we're doing those things, we have a host of other tasks that we are managing as well. Checking our blood sugars, taking shots or pills, adjusting pump settings, counting our carbs, um, reading labels, coping with those unexplained highs and lows. And all of these things, the, each individual thing is very small, but over time, having to do them over and over again can really, it can add up for us. And we find that suddenly we don't want to do any of it anymore because it all feels like so, so much. So I've got this little diagram here. That's sometimes what I feel like on a rough day, trying to do it all, calculate it all, and look good and smile throughout the whole thing. Because we do also get hit with the message a lot of the time that even though we have diabetes, we can do anything that a non-diabetic can do. And in principle, I do believe that, that we can do, we can thrive in our lives and we can have great success and we can accomplish all kinds of tasks. But it also, there's that builds a very high expectation on us that we need to be doing it all with a smile on our face, never having any of the downsides of it. And therefore, when we do have any of the struggles, we can feel a lot of shame around that. The shame that we are not just hanging in there and able to do this without ever ruffling our feathers, when in reality, most, most of the diabetics I've worked with, and myself as well, we do have challenges, and we do experience some stresses around this. And we do find that it's not always easy even if we are able to accomplish many of the things we want to do. So 
another part of this, uh, as I'm gathering from the, the chat box there, is that many of our healthcare professionals are not trained to look for burnout. They're not trained and it's not something that they are vigilant for. And oftentimes when we are feeling some of the signs and the symptoms of burnout, what can happen is that we'll go see a doctor and rather than really recognizing that this is part of the psychological toll of having a chronic condition, uh, we might get labeled as non-compliant or not doing the things we need to be doing for our health. And so then we get this extra burden on top of already struggling emotionally of feeling like somehow we are not a good enough patient. So some of the signs you might experience for yourself when you're heading down that burnout path is feeling overwhelmed and feeling irritable or angry, um, being testy when one of your loved ones or your partner asks you about how things are going and how that blood sugar is. We might feel some depression. There might be a disinterest in managing your diabetes or avoiding some of the things that you used to do and just not wanting to do it anymore. Just feeling it's too hard. And this can lead to feelings of anxiety and strained relationships, feeling like we're a burden to those who care about us, which then furthers the isolation because then we turn it off and we don't turn to them anymore. And that can lead to feelings of fatigue and feelings of emptiness. And so there's a really a lot of signs of, of the psychological distress that we can experience because of this day-to-day -day management and the, the cumulative toll that it takes. And all of these things are normal um, and they happen when we're forced to focus so much of our daily en energy on caring for diabetes. We, the brain just gets overloaded sometimes. And with the highs and lows that we can always joke about as a, as a diabetic, um, within one day, and also over the course of many months or years, we can experience extreme cycles of highs and lows. And th that can be both objective numbers, like our, our glucose readings or other medical markers, um, but also in terms of our emotional responses. We, we might move from the joy of a great A1C one day, only to find that we have multiple unexplained highs over the following week, and that can leave us feeling drained and beaten and be very discouraging at times. But these fluctuations are normal. It can feel like we're really alone in dealing with these experiences, but almost all people who have a chronic disease or a chronic health condition have a bit of a roller coaster at times. And the challenge of living with a, a hidden disease where other people may not be able to see from looking at us that we are have a, a chronic condition is that they don't see the struggle all the time. And we can often try be trying to shield other people from the pain that we're feeling, and so it keeps it inside, and we feel pressure to do it all and do it with ease. And one of the biggest reliefs from the clients I work with is this acknowledgement that others have that same drain and distress too at times. If nothing else, they find that, that is, that's a huge relief to know, hey, I'm not alone in this, you know, we are all in this together and there's huge power in, in knowing that. Uh, and as I'm kind of getting from some of the comments over on the, the side here too is, okay, you think you get what burnout is, but the real reason we all came here tonight I think is you tuned in to find out what can you do about it, how can you move past it. So let's talk a little bit about what to do if you're in burnout right now or in, when you're in a situation where the burnout is actively present in your life. So the first thing is to give yourself a break. Uh, it's okay to pout and be sad and be angry for a day. That only becomes a problem when we stay in that place for a long period of time. Sometimes you just kind of need to feel sorry for yourself and mope. As long as you don't stay there, that's okay. And when we deny that we're feeling distressed and overwhelmed, those feelings are likely to persist even longer. Um, so it really helps the, in terms of our emotional management to be able to acknowledge the feelings that we're having, 
to sit with them and actually let ourselves experience them, experience the depression, experience some of that anxiety without trying to push it away so much. And that helps us actually to move forward through those emotions far more so than when we're trying to deny and push them away and pretend that they're not there. When we do that, they're much more likely to kind of fester and, and build in time and lead to a situation that is much more difficult to cope with and to deal with. And we also need to really accept and even expect imperfections. It's particularly difficult when our medical system preaches the virtues of strict control for our diabetes and definitely a tight control is something that is a great goal for us to have and yet it can also cause a lot of upset when we are trying so hard day to day but we still aren't always getting there and it's important to recognize that we will make mistakes but that some things are out of our control and most of us don't like that kind of uncertainty but it is inevitable in life in general and diabetes management specifically so trying our best to really control the pieces you can control and trying to let go of the rest. Doing the best you can is actually enough. And treat yourself with kindness when you continue to try and know that there's going to be bumps in the road. You will have successes and you will have challenges where it's not so easy. And when you're able to expect that it's not always going to be a smooth ride, again, that can be really healing in terms of your own journey. And when you are in burnout too, it's very important to respect your energy levels. Um, when some days you're going to need to scale back your activities and your commitments. And it's okay to place limits on what you're doing in order to restore your personal balance. Try your best to give yourself permission to do that. It's okay to take the time to have some restorative practices and to take some downtime and to really um, take the time for yourself that you need and notice which things you're doing are helping with that and which things are, are drawing that energy away. And oftentimes we don't even recognize how overly active we are until we have a moment of rest and really trying to tune into your body and what it's needing. If your body has a day of rest, this might be the time to allow yourself to have that. Another great strategy when you are in the midst of, of burnout is to be really celebrating the wins, even the small wins. And this is something I learned from my own therapist and the own work I've done as well as something that I, I share very frequently with the clients I work with. Um, when, the, when you're in the midst of a doldrum, all the